Christmas is celebrated all around the world by many different people and cultures by extension. And as such, Christmas is chock full of different traditions. From leaving cookies and milk for Santa Claus to giving gifts to one another, a lot of what we associate with Christmas is actually fairly old. Most of these traditions have been around for quite some time. However, one tradition that hasn't exactly remained in the mainstream is that of telling horror or even ghost stories. A bright holiday like Christmas and haunting stories to chill your bones aren't exactly something you would picture together. However, believe it or not, telling ghost stories around a fire during the holiday season is an old tradition from long before you or me, from the Victorian era to be precise. As far as the tradition goes, the most well-known ghost story that is still told today is A Christmas Carol. The 1843 story by Charles Dickens tells the tale of a man tormented by ghosts on Christmas Eve Visited by the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, Mr. Scrooge, the protagonist of A Christmas Carol, disposes of his selfish ways and becomes a better person by the end of the classic tale. I'm sure everyone knows this story, it's only been adapted several times, hell, even by Disney. However, it seems like this is really the only well-known spooky tale that is still around, a remnant from a centuries-old tradition. But A Christmas Carol isn't the only Christmas legend that lurks out there. There are several spooky Christmas-themed legends that should enter the mainstream, much like Dickens' A Christmas Carol. So, I thought, how about we as a community resurrect this old tradition? October and Halloween shouldn't be the only time of the year where we gather around and spread our spookiest of tales. After all... It's always Halloween in my soul. Gather around the fire, everyone, grab some snacks, maybe some hot chocolate, and allow me to tell you a haunting tale this chilly night. A long time ago, on Christmas night, 1842, Lord Lavelle, an English royal, was in preparation to marry a young woman related to Sir John Cope, the master-slash-owner of Bramshell House in Hampshire, England. This young maiden's name has unfortunately been lost to time. So, for the sake of continuity, we'll call her Eliza. Mistletoes adorned the halls of Bramshell House, decorated for the Christmas time festivities. Everyone in the household that night was having a jolly old time, drinking and conversing among one another. At some point during the night's celebration, someone suggested they commemorate the soon-to-be bride's marriage with a game of hide-and-seek. Eliza was much obliged. Eliza was to hide in the enormous mansion, and all the groomsmen would seek her out. To the winner, the spoils. That of course being a kiss with Eliza. With the rules in place, the game was soon underway. As the host counted down from 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Eliza went off to hide. The groomsmen searched and searched around every nook and cranny in the mansion. Eliza was surprisingly good at hiding, they thought. The party searched for minutes, then two hours, still no sign of her. Eventually, the entirety of those in attendance began to grow concerned. They all kept searching until the early light of the following day. Eliza was nowhere to be found. The family quickly called the local law enforcement. After days, weeks, and eventually months of searching, Eliza was still nowhere to be found. As for the groom, Lord Lavelle, he was left dejected, given the thought that his soon-to-be bride had disappeared without a word. But where did she go, you may be asking? Well, fast forward 50 years later, Lord Lavelle was still in search of answers in regards to Eliza's disappearance. He would only find his answer after he was doing some springtime cleaning. Years later, Lavelle was cleaning upstairs when he came upon a hidden closet in one of the rooms of Bramshell House. There, he found a wooden chest, sealed shut with a lock. He grabbed the nearest blunt object and forced the chest open. He let out a long, horrified gasp. Inside the chest were the remains of Eliza, his missing bride. She was in an unrecognizable state, nothing but dust, cobwebs, and bone. The only thing that revealed her identity was the wedding dress and proposal ring that adorned the corpse. When police arrived on the scene, they deduced that Eliza had opted to hide in the sturdy chest. 
only for her to accidentally lock herself inside after closing it with such force. She was stuck there for decades, and no one ever heard her slamming against the chest, nor did they hear her pleas for help. Legend has it that you can spot Eliza's spirit still wandering the halls of Bramshell House, crying about her premature death. So, is the legend real? Well, I'm not so sure. The legend is actually quite the classic haunt. It's been spread around for ages and, according to the variation you just heard, since the Victorian era. If you're familiar with the scary stories to tell in the dark books, then the story should also be familiar to you. In the book, written by Stephen Gamel and illustrated by Alvin Schwartz, the same legend is retold under the title, The Bride. The premise is effectively the same with a few differences, mainly the story doesn't take place in England during the Christmas season. Anyhow, the legend has no clear point of origin and as such can't really be proven true nor false. Such is the nature of most of our legends. That said, it sounds almost too bizarre for someone to accidentally get locked in a chest during a game of hide and seek. My point? The event that transpired in the legend sounds too random to be true. Though. I suppose improbable doesn't mean impossible. Hell, it's not like people haven't accidentally died while playing a game of hide and seek. According to an article on Fox8.com, yeah, yeah, I know, not the most reputable source, but anyway. In 2015, a group of friends were playing hide and seek when one of the men playing accidentally fell to his death down an elevator shaft. The article reads, Police are investigating the death of a 21-year-old man who apparently fell down an elevator shaft while playing hide-and-seek with friends in a vacant Detroit building. Police say the group was on the building's 9th floor early Saturday morning. The man's friends left when they couldn't find him, but they returned later in the morning to search for him. They called 911 after finding his body amid a pile of debris in the shaft on the first floor of the building. Eerily, the news article and legend share quite a bit of similarities. A group of individuals is playing hide and seek in search of another, only for the person to go missing. The group goes out in search of that missing individual, only for them to give up, assuming they had gone elsewhere. So with all that said, who's to say that the legend didn't happen? After all, urban legends are all based on a kernel of truth. Well, that brings an end to this spooky Christmas tale. I do hope you all enjoyed this eerie legend, and let me know what you thought in the comments below. Happy holidays everyone, and happy new years too. Let's hope for a better one this time.